<sighs> Hello, my children. Gather round. Let me tell you a story. Year and year ago, I was begging my friends to listen to my music, to put it on their Spotify playlist, sending PR campaigns to blogs with no readers, and doing all the things that I thought an independent artist was supposed to do to make it in this business we call show. And that led to me sounding like this and wearing this horrible golf jacket at the age of 34. Anyway, I was terrified to get in front of a camera and to make videos because I thought people would make fun of me and say, your hairstyle's straight out of 2007 or you sound like Billy Bob Thornton if he were less famous and had no talent. And I also knew just how much work it would be to put out just one video per week on the YouTube. Then one day, as I was riding my carriage through the countryside, it occurred to me. I was being selfish. <laughs> I was trying to build an audience while only considering what people could do for me, when instead I could be trying to provide them with some sort of value. And in doing so, create a sense of community. And this would build a sense of trust to potential fans. Master Skywalker! Who, who said that? There are too many of them. What are we going to do? Hey, who, who let that youngling in here? <laughs> yeah, it's true. I never really wanted to make YouTube videos. I liked the idea of it, but I also knew just how much work it was going to be and how much I didn't know about video editing and would have to learn. I really just wanted to make music which seems like a crazy thing to say, I realize, but I think it's a position a lot of us find ourselves in. But at the same time, I had been releasing music long enough to realize that just making music, unless you release highly playlistable music at a breakneck rate, is just not enough. At least not enough to make a full-time income off of these days. The days of just making music and expecting a promoter or a label to come in and do all of the work that isn't just creating the music for you, They've been over for a while, and while it's really easy for all of us, I think, including myself, to start pining for the days of old when a label really would promote you and really would put all this money behind you and have all of these connections that you didn't have, at some point I had to stop and think, what are the realistic possibilities that I would have ever had a chance to make a record in that system? See, when we're pining for the glory days, we automatically think that we would be one of the lucky chosen ones, chosen by the large gatekeepers of the day. And unless you're one of the, you know, I don't know, one or two percent, that's just not the case. It's not realistic. Now today, labels are still out there. And I think a lot of us are still stuck in that same mindset of, well, I'll just make the music and the label will do everything else. They'll promote me, they'll find the audience for me. And while that might be true in some cases, most of the labels still want a large chunk of the profit without really offering you anything in way of services that you can't learn to do yourself these days. In fact, a lot of times, they're not gonna take things as far as you would yourself because it's your work and you care about it. And what they care about most of all these days is volume. And I mean, volume as in quantity of songs and not like the loudness wars volume which is another video entirely so the bad news it's all on you and the good news it's all on you so you and i have more power as an independent artist and more control over our own career than we've ever had in the past the only question that we all have to ask ourselves is how serious am i about making this work now, this was the exact question that I had to ask myself about a year ago, a little over a year ago now. What are my goals with my music career? And at least for me, I kind of had to let go of the idea that my music in and of itself would ever be able to support me fully financially. And that was a difficult thing to let go of because I always assumed we would get to that point eventually, but reality check, it may never happen. Now, what that doesn't mean is that I quit making music. It doesn't even mean that my music is no longer the most important part of my career and what I do. Quite the contrary. I've talked a little bit before in past videos about how I started to get concerned about the role playlisting was playing in my creativity, 
and how I started writing for playlists, and that made me feel just kind of gross. And I began to realize I was compromising doing the things that I really wanted to be pursuing and taking more chances creatively at the expense of trying to get on these big playlists, which aren't a guarantee anyway. I'll link that video where I talk more about that somewhere in one of these corners. But wait, don't click on it just yet. But that's the game that you have to play if you're just gonna rely on playlists and streaming royalties to make a living. You have to write for the playlist. I mean, that's part of it. There's nothing wrong with it, I just didn't want to do it. And I don't think it fosters creativity in the long run for most artists. So I shifted my mindset and started to think of some ways that I could help other people and teach other people the things that I've learned over the years. And in doing so on YouTube, you can build a personal connection with your audience. Like you guys who have watched me before, you probably feel like you know me at this point. You know my sense of humor. You know the ridiculous skits that I do at the beginning of some of these videos and pretend to laugh at them to make me feel better, which I truly appreciate. Basically, it allows you to build an audience that knows you're not full of it and knows that you're a person. You can't do that on Spotify. Spotify is not a social platform. So the only real way to build trust is to give and give and give of the stuff that you know. Just give it away for free. Oh, hi. Just dropping in from the future while editing this video. Look at that guy. He has no idea. Just want to let you know that I condensed kind of the main talking points of this video into a checklist. If you like checklist, you can put it on your refrigerator, on your mirror as you do your 2007 hair in the mornings. So if you want to download that, it's absolutely free. First link in the description. And keep giving it away until people almost feel guilty about how much they've learned from it. Then when you have an ask of your audience, they're gonna come running to your aid. Now, even though this channel is really still in its infancy, I can already see the benefits of this. I feel more connected to the people who comment, who subscribe to my email list, who converse with me on a regular basis. All of this is, here's the evil word for you, content marketing. But guess what? It's not evil. It's actually a way to give back to the people who support you and then they give back to you by supporting you more. Now, I do understand the word content feeling kind of cringy to us as artists. Can't believe I just used the word cringy. It's one of the cringier things you can do. Anyway, the reason we hate that word is because it seems to reduce our art that we feel very passionately about down to just a commodity to be consumed. And to some degree, that is true, but unfortunately, it's also the world that we live in. Initially, this felt to me like selling out, but as I thought about it more, I started to realize this isn't selling out, this is actually setting my music free by relieving it of the burden of having to make money. So now, I'm building out systems so that people get into my email list, I can sell them products which also help them after having already given away a lot of information to people for free. So they feel like they've already gotten value, they can trust me. And that's a lot of what this YouTube channel is all about, giving away value stuff that I've learned. That has set my music free from having to be a money-making machine. I don't have to worry about writing for playlists anymore. I don't care about numbers on Spotify as a vanity metric anymore. And in turn, I think it's actually making my music better because I'm no longer thinking about all of those commercial ideas of success and trying to fit my square peg music into the round hole of a Spotify playlist. And now I'm making what I'm passionate about, which makes it better, which then makes those numbers go up that I wanted in the first place. So you can see how all of this starts to kind of build on itself. It's a cyclical type of thing that feeds into one another in a very natural way. So my only regret is having not started this channel in the way that it exists now, five years ago. So yes, it's very easy to become bitter when people are not listening to your music, but you have to ask yourself the question, when is the last time I listened to a random link from someone I don't know without trying to get anything in return for myself? You probably haven't. I know I haven't. I mean, why would you do that? <laughs> we are all selfish. If you boil it right down, we are all selfish. So give to people. Start offering value. Give of your experience, of your knowledge. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. It takes time to build this way, but I can already start to see that it's a more solid foundation. So maybe you wanna think about shifting to a more service-oriented mindset. 
what can I do to offer value to the people that I might ask something of later? But don't even worry about the ask. Right now, we're just building people, a community. Now, this seems like a lot of work because it's a lot of work. Trust me, it's a lot of work and it takes time and most people probably don't have the patience to do it. And you're gonna have to learn more skills than you probably ever wanted to learn. But it all boils back down to that question that we ask ourselves in the beginning, how serious are you about doing this? If you help people, people will remember that. That's the important takeaway here. If you just give a cold ask and there's nothing really there for them, even though you love your own music because you've spent a lot of time with it, it means a lot to you, it means nothing to them. They don't care. They get bombarded with ads and links all the time. They don't want to hear it. So how serious are you about this? Is this something that you want to fully invest your time and efforts in? If so, you might think about shifting to this service mindset and just remember, sometimes the things that we're most afraid of doing, like sitting down in front of a camera and talking to random people, can be the things that kind of set us free and break us through whatever barriers that we may have implemented on ourselves. So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a like, shows it to more people. And if you want to see more stuff like this and more stuff about synthesizers and music production and all of that kind of good stuff, then hit subscribe, because I'll be here doing this for a very long time. See ya.